Thank you. Yeah, so this basically covers um, some work we did uh, pre-pandemic now on flying start in Wales. So it's the equivalent of um, the shore start in England. Uh, so very briefly, uh, going to look at what flying start is, um, what the aims of the project was to to work with the flying start data, the methodologies, findings, and uh, briefly some next steps. Um, so broadly speaking, then flying star essay is, is the equivalent of uh, uh, sure start in England. So four key elements um, of the program are um, high quality childcare for two year olds, enhanced health visiting service from health visitors, uh, access to parenting courses and um, additional support for speech, language and communication for the children under the program. It's a targeted program, I shouldn't say, tar shouldn't say targeted, um, but it is um, prioritised in areas of disadvantage in Wales. So um, it's allocated, the funding is allocated based upon the Welsh Index of Multiple Deprivation. A program has been running since 2006 7, um, and in, I think it's been seen a various um, phase of expansion, I think in 2013 14, and the aim of it is to improve life chances. So to as they give children that flying start in life. Um, just briefly look at the mod logic model, probably best to look at it in more detail here. Um, the four strands basically, um, so it covers, covers health, childcare, speech and language development and parenting. Um, so the outcomes are expected, um, uh, listed here basically. Um, and I think the multi-strand approach, you know, is, is one which, you know, has, it has a sort of cross-cutting analysis, um, cross-cutting nature of it, uh, in order to give children support they really need in different areas. Um, so the key, the two key planks are are the childcare element and the um, health visitor element. So uh, what we're going to do today is look at some of the results um, of some analysis we did using data from Swansea. Um, so basically, um, previous evaluations of, of Flying Start looked at an area-based analysis, um, and this was the first time we, we aimed to use individual level data for Flying Start to look at outcomes for health and education and, and um, social care. Um, and then there's an element of this where we were looking at different levels of engagement with Flying Start. So using individual level data, we can look at how much Flying Start they had. So this whole, a whole area around dosage. And the aim of, the, of, our, of our analysis was to feed into uh, future policy making for Flying Start in Wales. Um, so basically, yeah, we were looking to collect data from all across Wales, but in the event we had uh, just data from one authority, um, we, there's still an ongoing project to obtain more flying start data for different authorities, but um, Swansea were um, being co-located with the sale data bank. They were um, nearest as it were to, to provide, it to, we, we could, work more closely in partnership with them to get get their data into the sale data bank uh, and they're very supportive of what we were trying to do um, and as the project went along we worked closely with them um, to sort of QA the results and, and various things um, so but they provide us with data covering a, a, a quite a long series of, of data and um, they kept um, submitting more data to, to, to the data bank as they went along. So we had a, a group of around 8,000, so a cohort um, over that period. And what we did, we used, um, used that as the, 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 the sort of like the cases. And then as a control group, we actually used the other children living in, in the Swansea area. Um, so we, we subtracted um, the flying start children out of that as it were and then left the rest rest of the children in swansea in, in a non non-flying start group and basically what we did we for both these groups we linked um the data from the flying start program um to outcomes in terms of health and education we looked at um any attendance we looked at hospitalizations 
and we looked at uh, school attendance. And then um, having done an initial analysis using the, for those areas, um, we went on to look at um, outcomes for uh, when children start in key stage one at school, not key stage one, but the what we call the foundation phase in Wales now is, is key stage one. Sorry, I get confusing. Um, but we could look at, um, so part of it was around school readiness, um, getting children in flying start areas more ready for school so that when they do go to school setting, they can learn and develop more quickly. Um, so we were looking at, did some analysis, looking at using um, uh, the initial um, assessments that are carried out on children in the first six weeks of, or six or eight weeks of, of uh, their entry into sort of um, nursery education. Uh, so basically, um, we linked Flying Start data with birth records, hospital records and education records. And this provides a sort of cross-cutting nature of the analysis. So you can look at look at the same group of children across the various different spheres. Um, so basically, we drilled down um, and from de down to various levels. So from the what we have in Wales is that the, the WDS, uh, Welsh Demographic Service Population Spine, as it were, which comes from the NHS Central Register. And from that, we can identify uh, the Flying Start children and, and then the non-Flying Start group. And then as the analysis progressed, we thought, well, we'll drill down deeper. Um, so to look at the, the dosage effect, we, we start to look at childcare. Um, so we had a group of, of 8,000 in the Health Register group. And then we had a smaller group who we had records for childcare data records for. Um, and so, um, so from, from scratching the surface at the top and providing this indicator, we went on to look at, at things at a more detailed level as, as time went along. So some early statistics we had were around um, birth statistics and, and headline indicators. So we was able to look at low birth weight for flying start and non-flying start. And you can see there how um, as the program develops, um, you can see there was an impact on, on low birth weight. And for births of teenage mothers also reduced um, over time. Um, so you can see there the relative impact that flying start had compared to uh, children non flying star areas and for Wales. So, and that was a, a good first, first stab at some indicators in, in analysis for this project. And then we went on to look at hostel admissions for not to four year olds. And um, you can see here that, the, that there was a, a gap to, between the flying start and non flying star areas, which started, we were able to sort of have an impact on and a possible protect, protective effect of flying start on hostel admissions. And then uh, we looked at school absence. And you can see here that um, in terms of uh, school absence, there was a, 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 here you see that actually the impact of both flying start and the change in um, regulations as, reg as regards um, children being taken out of school during term time. And you can see here that there, there's actually a closed, we actually managed to close the gap a bit. The impact on unauthorized absence was um, perhaps bigger um, than the, the new regulations compared to non flying start areas. But you can see there that um, hopefully that improved um, outcomes for flying start children. And then, as I say, we looked at dosage, <clears throat> we looked at uh, six different ways to measure the amount of childcare. So we were looking at both uh, health visitor contact and childcare, and we looked at six different ways to categorise the amount of childcare that, that children received. And um, basically we uh, consulted internally and with stakeholders and came up with something which looks like this. The 156 um, sessions is based upon 39 weeks and four days per week, four sessions per week. And then we also looked at, at, at using 
because we had the number of sessions they agreed to, a number of sessions they attended. So we looked at also uh, percentage attendance. And you can see here, this gives a sort of uh, fairly even split between the four groups that that generates. And so as we went on, we, we drilled down deeper into the, into the data and looked at outcomes based upon childcare. And you can see here that um, there's a different impact. There's a there's, there you can see the, the different um, levels of any attendances for those who had um, lower uh, percentage attendance in childcare. Um, and then we looked also looked at hospital admissions for the same groups. And you can see here that the, as time goes on, you can see a difference between the um, the different groups. So I, um, there's so much data here. Um, I forgot what was, what's what basically. Um, but overall, what we what we discovered was that um, the percentage attendance had a bigger impact um, on outcomes than than the actual number of sessions agreed to. Um, so you can see here for uh, um, absence from school and authorised absence and overall absence that um, where attendance in childcare was higher, um, the children tended to have lower absence at school in due course. Um, so that suggests it's it's more to do with uh, the having been in the routine of going to childcare rather than the actual amount. So in terms of dosage. I think that's a has a bigger impact rather than actual number of sessions agreed to. And then if we break down, um, looking at outcomes, I have to skip over this one. Um, so looking at outcomes in in terms of school readiness on in the in the when children go into school, you can see here that where attendance was higher, uh, the outcomes tended to be better. Um, so. Overall, in terms of dosage, it does appear that the, the actual the actual percentage of attendance is a bigger it has a bigger impact than the actual number of sessions agreed to, rather than the number of days per week. And then we also looked at um, outcomes by um, by area of learning on 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 the on, on entry assessments, um, and you can see here um, I didn't actually produced this myself um, in the release. So um, again, you can see the impact um, that the percentage, uh, the percentage attendance has on, on outcomes. Um, so these, those, the recent results I presented here were um, released in three releases in 2019. The links are uh, available there. Um, we did these as brief sort of sort of snapshot sort of releases rather than do a full journal articles um, because we was aware as, as the project had gone on a while we needed to get something out fairly quickly so uh, we did these as as um, releases in on the Welsh government website and then possible next steps um, we still there's still a, a number of different research questions we can look at relating to flying start in Wales in, into Swansea. Um, one element we've not looked at is the amount of health visitors um, impact in contact we've had, which you have had with the, with the programme. Um, and we need to sort of go back and look again at, at the logic model and um, whether that has achieved the outcomes. Um, and we're also open to um, receive data from further local authorities and develop the analysis further. So what we do is very much proof of concept um, but there is an out, outstanding aim that if we can develop it to look at the whole of Wales when, when we would in due course if we were able to. Uh, I hope that was useful. Um, apologies for being a little bit unclear on results there. Uh, there was a lot, we did do a lot of um, analysis in a short space of time, um, but we believe that what we did we had a impact in terms of building the evidence base of flying start in Wales. Thank you.